Hello guys and welcome back to another narrated video. So we start this one today um, after one of the daily streams where we did a bunch of gestures which turned out to be real good um, warm up for this piece since a lot of it was going to be based around like the gesture of Gollum and um, sort of like the attitude that uh, the posing and gesturing was going to instill. So we've been doing these uh, gesture studies for a couple of weeks and <clears throat> slowly but surely sort of moving on between disciplines uh, but seeing as uh, gesture studies are a good way of breaking up anatomical studies and making sure that you stay dynamic and stay um, interesting it's a very good way to, to warm up for this so here we go with a little bit of the the build up for the character I wanted to try out a bunch of different poses usually I do most of this in my head kind of settle on a on a on a composition or a pose and sort of go for that and make small iterations if I need to uh, but for this one I thought it was fun to explore a little do some uh, some different versions see what they would all um, lend to the piece I quite like the one that's been worked on there uh, but it ended up like it, that, that pose is more appropriate to something like Dobby from Harry Potter than Gollum um, and this kneeling one I thought was interesting I thought I would maybe have him, you know, like putting his hand over the the ring, uh, almost like holding it down. So to sort of make some of the decisions for me, I did a little um, sort of sketch of of his face, of what I wanted. Um, sort of the, the the first sort of emphases that I wanted to to put on the character, and I really quite liked this idea of this hollowed out face. Uh, this clear indication of um, of not just like corruption but age. Um, I like that about Gollum as a character that he uh, he's not just this goblin. He is someone who's been so corrupted that he has lost his entire existence to his um, obsession with the ring. So I figured that trying to get a little bit of this sort of lost um, feeling into the piece would be interesting. So he's like hunched down in the dark, crazily throwing peaks over his shoulder. Um, and I had this idea um, of, of him having sort of broken this fish in two, like ripped it in half, um, and he was eating it. And I quite liked that as a, as a basis. So, so that's what we end up going for. Uh, in the story, of uh, of the Hobbit, he is described as having like a little tool set, like he you know, like little needles and, and files and stuff for his teeth. So I like the idea of of him being a little more dressed, not much, but like you know, um, he comes from something. He's not just like a cave dwelling barbarian. So he kind of remembers these tools and whatnot. So starting to put in the colors, um, I like this idea of. Um, using yellow as an under under color and then gradually dropping in um, a larger and larger variety of subtle tones on top but still anchoring it towards that yellow um, I wanted his hair to be kind of brittle and white and greasy because again uh, I like this idea that he's an old man um, kept sort of from graceful aging by the power of the ring so that is a that is a basis for him as is kind of strong <clears throat> so at this point we have gone into the, the kind of normal cleanup um, thing that I usually do you know like I, I put down my colors now I gotta try and push back um, the lines and introduce a bunch of little details and stuff and then we start putting in the sh uh, shadows. And at this point, during one of the live streams, one of the audience members suggested that we try and do this one a little more traditionally. So um, I started to sort of <laughs> recalibrate on how I wanted to do that. So I'm essentially just using a dark green yellow color here uh, on the normal layer and starting to lay in the shapes and just come 
was taking a moment out there to explain some comparative contrast theory for the, the audience. Let's come back to it. It's a slower start because it's, it's more like drawing for me, um, doing this, this method. Um, and it does lend itself to sort of a more grounded, uh, muddy palette. So it's a, it's, a, it's a nice it's a nice technique to use for Gollum to not rely so much on layering techniques but more um, sort of previsualization and uh, laying things in with more deliberation than usual. So you can see like it's going fairly slowly and I'm having to consider um, more like turns of the shape of the head, for example. Um, and so this is a less time efficient technique, but it still lends itself well to, to these kinds of concept pieces because you can control the gamut of the colors and the like the, the mood of the colors better. Um, and also there's something very pleasing about every choice being so deliberate. Uh, so little by little, carving out the shape, uh, looking for problem areas and layering things in very gradually. Um, And there's a there's a certain amount of sort of pushing and pulling, right? Like laying in elements and, and seeing, okay, that might have been a little too much, and then seeing, okay, these shapes need to be reinforced. So pull, pulling them forwards, seeing if it's gone a little too far, pushing them back again. Um, but having a general idea of light direction and some detail orientation, because I I really want this this idea of sort of light spilling in, revealing all these little details about it. Um, in hindsight now I can notice, for example, that there's more light than necessary on lower parts of the torso, for example, and um, on those thighs I should have just been a little more direct with the application of shadow there, but you know, nobody's perfect. <coughs> So, in hindsight, it could have probably been more efficacious about working uh, from large shapes to small shapes. There becomes a lot of uh, detail picking here. And it's essentially because uh, in this kind of painting method, the um, where, where you're trying to sort of match techniques and effects of, of uh, real life um, Tools. A lot of the sort of sort of the, the great finishing touches come in the end, and they require that you kind of finish with your detail noodling earlier on. Um, so I'm 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 trying to get things to sort of feel semi permanent. I want to get that shapeliness in there, um, and I'm trying to work across the piece. Um, so that everything kind of feels like it's on the same level. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a nice and dynamic way of working too. Because you get to... You, you don't have to stick to one work task all the time. It is a continuous pushing and pulling of the form. So you can kind of work up and down in values. Um, and I'm getting to try stuff like different little designed light shapes and stuff like that. Um, and some of it works and some of it doesn't, and it's a, it's an interesting sort of little measuring pin that you have when you work like this, where you can sort of, you can very quickly tell when something is working, and then it's often a bit of a search to see what isn't working, um, and then finding those things and, and letting them go and taking a step back and figuring out how you can get that effect that you need in spite of not using this technique or that technique. So again, there's a lot of noodling. I really wanted... I've been looking a bunch on, um, on faces of, of older, um, of older uh, actors and, uh, and some uh, drug addicts just to get like a, an idea of sort of that 
worn, stretched feeling of, of skin and flesh. Uh, and I'm trying to apply that to his face while also trying to build that facial expression a little. Uh, and you'll see that there's a there's a lot of pushing and pulling um, as that goes on. We're about halfway through now, and uh, <laughs> there's still a lot to be done there. Um, I felt like the fish really needed to be uh, a bit of a pulling point. I had I had a plan for the ring to sort of be shining ominously, um, and that will come. But um, I also like the idea of like the mouth and the eyes and the fish sort of pulling in the attention because of the touches of red that's going to be there in an overwhelmingly sort of blue and green yellow palette. Those are going to stand out. I think the trick about working um, with this kind of a palette and this kind of a technique is that you have to stay vigilant all the time. Um, one of the advantages of working with more um, layer conscious techniques is that you can kind of set your mind to one task and you can kind of let your mind wander as you apply you know, all the shadows and all, all the lights. And that's very pleasant. It's a lovely way of working, especially in professional illustration. But um, when you then try and do something like this, there is a huge appreciation of just how much you have to stay on the ball. Um, because, yeah, the, 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 the decision pattern is entirely different. So, starting to adjust some of the background now trying to uh, get a little bit of that that feeling of like a cave but also wanting to keep it fairly abstract I didn't want to do too much and didn't want to um, didn't want to uh, pull attention away from the the character itself but I still feel like, at least in the end, it ended up working really well as a, as a nice little sort of um, attention grabber, the nice contrast in the background. Uh, right now they're a little more subtle than they end up being, uh, thanks to some use of uh, some adjustment layers and stuff at the end. Um, I got the contrast just where I wanted it. But yeah, it's a lot of back and forth here. Like for, one of those examples of it never being too late to, to admit that you screwed up is, for example, with the fish, where I I had like the the, the tail the the back fin and the flippers and everything. They were not belonging to any normal fish at all. So once I fixed them and I saw that that had been like a thing that wasn't working, but I wasn't aware of it, and then you. You see that that thing's not working and you go and fix it and like suddenly a bunch of stuff looks a lot better. Um, so here comes the, the glow of the ring. Suddenly the eyes stand out a lot less um, because of that stark yellow. They're almost melting into the face now. So I have to go back and I'm going to do some stuff with that. I'm going to add some colder light hitting, hitting them. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I really like how that works now with the, with, with the ring. That too becomes a nice little attention grabber. And um, even though it's like a nice warm glow, the, I imagine in the context of the Lord of the Rings, you'd be pretty aware that that's an ominous, glowy thing. Um, but also, in as much as like in The Hobbit, you're not so aware of the evil of the ring in the beginning. That might actually work doubly well for that narrative. I know that Gollum doesn't necessarily have the ring hanging in the thing around his neck. He's supposed to have it in like a crevice in a rock somewhere. Um, and that would have been the, the image had I gone the other route in the original choice of, of posing. Um, he was gonna either like have it pressed down under his hand or like he was gonna be reaching for it inside of that little crevice. But I quite like this. This seems to work well for me. Um, so again, noodling with the background, it's it's <clears throat> a bit, bit of a game of contrasts at this point. I'm fairly happy with the overall rendering, I'm fairly happy with how most of the things look. 
Uh, at this point, I tend to sort of go and ask people I, whose input I uh, crave for for some suggestions. So Sunny had some ideas um, that made me think, and in general, taking a tiny bit of time away from the piece and just giving it some things. Uh, Maybe we want to go back and sort of reapply some more contrasts. Uh, so I'm going in with a soft light layer here. Um, actually, this is normal. I'm just rendering on top now. But soon I'll be going in with a normal layer and switching up the contrasts a little and basically continuing to try and push things inward. So, like around the mouth there, I, for example, used the soft light but with some red to sort of push on those those colors to try and find them more into the towards the fish and a lot <laughs> I see it more now but like the drool from the from the mouth down to the fish is coming through pretty nicely uh, so yeah here I really want to try and push the contrast a little more uh, we'll get that jaw working just so you know so you get that like nice intuitive feel of, of the light spitting across the form trying to get that cheek feel rounded really get that dramatic like light hitting uh, and recoiling sort of feeling um, rounding out the shapes as best as I can and working a little bit with a oh, that, that looks more dramatic on this screen than on the iPad but yeah working a little bit with the adjustment layer to get those contrasts popping um, I really like how that turned out these nice little wells of sudden darkness kind of pull it up pretty well so I'm quite fond of that uh, let's experiment a little more um, I've been looking at the the Goya painting of is it Saturn eating his children and there's a similar sort of like contrast extreme going on there I kind of like that but yeah so that's the Gollum piece from beginning to end. I hope you enjoy. Bye!